All right, so I'm, uh, I'm about to give this grafting a shot. Got a couple different kinds of tools to try out. The Chinese grafter and this German stainless one. In case I can't see, I've got some uh, magnifying lenses with a light. There's a couple different lenses in here I can flip, plus the little one. Got a frame with the right size and the age of eggs in it. My homemade bars with my uh, cups in them. And a damp paper towel the way over them as I get them done, keep them moist. And uh, we'll give this a shot and just see how it goes. I have no idea if I'm going to be good or bad at this. Okay, uh, now I'm done I'm getting everybody uh, settled. I've got my five frame Deaton Nuke here. I've got a container of water in the bottom with a rag and a sponge in it. I have uh, packed this thing full of nurse bees, as you can see from the screen at the top. There's just bees running around everywhere. And I have uh, my frame with all my uh, grafts in it, a frame of honey, and a full frame of pollen. Then I have an empty frame on each end just to help keep everything from sliding around while I was moving it from out back. So, you know, so a frame wouldn't tilt sideways and fall down. And uh, I've got everybody locked in. I'm going to keep them here in my garage out of the sun. Um, this box should have plenty of ventilation. I've got a hole just like this, the same size in the bottom. This is actually uh, for a feeder jar. And I have vents in both ends as well. A couple of stragglers made it in. Um, but uh, it's not supposed to get too hot today and tomorrow there's a front coming through and temperatures are supposed to be like in the upper 70s, low 80s. So I'm not going to worry about them getting too hot in here. Um, if it starts getting a little warm, I'll point a fan over this direction just to help move the air. But other than that, I'm just going to leave them in here and um, see how many of those queen cells you know, they'll draw out, see how well I did on grafting. So uh, when I open it back up and take a look, I'll let you see what's going on. Everybody trying to get out. Not going to focus on them anyway. There you go. You can see everybody's trying to get out. Um, these are all nurse bees I've had in this nuke in my garage for the last two days. And I'm about to open them up and pull out my grafting frames and see what they look like. You can see these being a little bit smaller sized bees are able to get their whole head out through that little number eight wire and uh, they have plenty of food and pollen and some water inside of there As you can see this nuke if I would have kept this outside I would have put up a completely screen top on top of it and set it in the shade but it has stormed down and off all weekend so I put them in this box in my garage with a fan pointed over to them to keep the air moving so they wouldn't overheat What I'm going to do is open up the hive. I'm going to take out a couple of uh, good frames of brood. Put on a metal queen excluder, which is one of the few times I'll use them for anything. It's one of the few things I think they're actually good for. And uh, I'll set the queen excluder on. I'll put the cedar box on top. I'll put my grafting frame. In the center, I'll put a frame of brew to each side. And I'll put some extra frames in there in the top just to give them somewhere to hang out. Put the lid back on and I'll let them take care of it. And that queen excluder will keep the queen from being able to get up there and spread her pheromones around on those frames. And the, uh, the cat brood I'm going to put on top will help draw the nurse bees up and give a kind of an insulating panel in each side of the queen cells that I'm going to put in. That way they are able to keep them nice and warm. I'm going to crack this open and uh, take a look and we'll see if any of my grafts actually have, have taken. Alright, done my arranging. This is my queen excluders right here. Empty box. Pulled out a good frame of brood. I shook all the, most of the bees off to make sure there's no queen on it. This side has brood, but it's mainly eggs. Some larvae, but... There's enough brew between these two to help draw nurse bees up. And I'll put the uh, queen cell frame right here 
put the food and pollens to the outsides and I'll dump all those nurse bees back in here. And as they start to smell this brood up here, they're going to start coming up through the screen to cover them. Plus the bees that I dump in here in the top will already be up here. And uh, let's see what our uh, frame looks like here. We're going to see bees that have been stuck in a box for a few days and the sound they make. I told you I put a lot of nurse bees in there. Let's get them off the lid. They're not happy campers. That is for sure. They're queenless and they've been locked up, so they're pretty ticked. See what I can pull out of here. I'm not gonna try to take an empty out right now. I'm just gonna try to get that queen cell frame out. Hey, we've got some taken. The ones that have wax drawn down on them are the grass that they took and we're making queen cells out of. They've actually started putting wax on the majority of them. Some are a lot drawn, drawn down a lot more than others. But hey, if you're never doing this before, I'm not going to complain. You can see they've drawn the wax down a little bit more on some of the old, older and younger. I have a little bit different ages in here. There are a few days difference depending on how I graft them out. So you have some that are a little bit farther along. Uh, that is not bad, I don't think. We're going to place them right in the center. We'll slide our uh, brood frames over next to it and transfer everything and everybody up there. So let me get to that with both hands. Right, here's the aftermath of the box, what was left in it. As you can see, there's dead bees in it. And bees die every day and they couldn't get out for two days so you have what would, would just naturally die outside or fall off the screen there's my little uh, container I had that I put a rag in some water it's still just slightly damp so they have plenty of water now just to I don't want to dump all these dead bees into the hive itself, so I'll shake what bees are in this box out of the front porch and let them, you know, go back in on their own. Here you can see everybody I dumped in. A lot of them have their butts up in the air fanning, blowing smells around. And I'll, uh, I'll put the lid on them and wait till uh, this Sunday and I'll open it up and I'll start uh, moving queen cells and making a nukes so there's my first attempt at grafting so far we'll see how many get completely drawn out and fed and look really good this coming weekend but for now I'm pretty happy with what's what's going on I was only hoping well I was only thinking I was going to get you know just a handful that actually even took so hopefully I, I lucked out and did a little bit better at grafting than I thought I did Right, I'm going to take care of this and close everybody up, and uh, we'll take a look at them this weekend. Here we are again out in the bee yard. It's Sunday, um, June the 25th. 
Um, it's about 7.30 in the morning. I'm trying to get up early and get this all done while it's cooler. Um, so today we are taking our grafted queen cells and we're going to move them into nukes. And I've got, let's see, one, two, three, 14, 15 nukes set up. I checked yesterday and out of like the 24 queen cells that they were working on, it looks like they completely finished and had 15 or 16 that were good to go. That's kind of what I planned off of. And uh, remember, the, the way we're doing it this year, everything out in this yard has been made from this one hive. So, starting off in the spring, we had this one hive. We have, on the, the far end there, we have three more full size ones. And the blue one to the side also has a queen. I checked yesterday and it did hatch and she's in there laying. So, so far we've gone from one to five. Now we're going to try to add 15 or 16 more. And these nukes, since we're doing everything from one hive, treatment freeway, we, um, you know, I can't make these full five and three frame nukes. I just don't have enough frames and bees out here. So a lot of these are going to be a frame or two of brood, mainly just to use as mating nukes to get the queens mated. Because, you know, this time of year in this area, if half of them make it back from mating, I'll be doing good. So once we see who's made it back and who's laying, then we'll consolidate you know, everything back down to at least five frame nukes. So let's get started. And we've taken off the lid. I'll give it just a little bit of smoke to get some bees out of the way. You can see this is our, our grafting frame here in the center. It's our queen excluder to keep her from getting up there and stabbing him through the cells and killing him. Look and see different cells that are drawn out. I'm gonna be very careful with these. They're still got a few days to go before they hatch and developing. So I'm gonna take this frame with these bees on it. I'm gonna put it over here into a nuke. I'm essentially gonna stash it away for later. I'm going to go through my hives and break down every frames, take brood out, start evenly distributing everything, find this queen and move her and put her into a nuke with some bees by herself so I don't accidentally smash her or transfer her to a nuke and not realize it. And uh, I also have queens in these other ones, but I'll, I'll put queen, them inside of queen clips and leave them in the hives. This one's got enough frames I need to go through that I'm going to just pull him and move her out of the way until I'm done. Then I'll put her back. So now what I'm doing is I'm breaking down the big hive. I've found the queen. I put her in this little nuke box for now. And uh, any frames with brand new eggs in it, you know, it's going to be weeks before they're ready to hatch. I'm putting in with her at the moment. I'm capped brood. It's going to be, you know, emerging sooner than later. I'm going through my nukes, and so far I'm putting a, a frame of each of that in as I go. Honey, or fully kept honey, is going in boxes to the sides. Um, drawn wax that hasn't been laid in yet, or foundation that hasn't been fully drawn, or going over here. I'm basically just separating everything out and uh, deciding how to distribute it. So after I finish doing this hive, I'm going to go steal some brood out of those two if I need it. And, um, yeah, we'll come back and take another look. And now that I've gotten a little bit more work done, I wanted to show you an update of where I'm at. Um, also, don't forget to bring some water with you. Drink while you're out here doing this. You'll end up being out here longer than you think. And you can pour water right through the veil without and take it off. You'll become way more dehydrated than you think. And a lot quicker than you think. So just remember to bring something out with you. All right, not that public service announcement's over. Uh, this nuke that we had our, our queen from the bigger hive in, I've taken everything back out. It's empty now. She's moved back over here. There are some frames of just eggs that I kept with her since they wouldn't do the, the nukes a lot of good since they're gonna, they have so long until they hatch. So she's back in here. 
She's got her uh, frames of eggs, her pollen, some honey, and she's down there somewhere. Now what I've done is, with my little three frame nuke boxes, I don't have any kind of feeder holes cut through the top. So what I've done is, I've gone through all the nukes, no matter what size they are, and put in a frame of cat brood covered in nurse bees. These three frame nukes with no feeder ho holes in them, I've given them a frame of honey capped honey that's what why there's two in here and when you go to the bigger five frame nukes I'm about to come through and give them an empty drawn comb because those lids have feeder jars in them and that'll give them somewhere to, to collect feed and store it so that's what I've done across all these so all my five frame nuke boxes will have feeder jars on them all my three frames will have nothing on them but a full frame of honey inside of them which will last them just fine right now I've also stolen some frames of brood out of those three hives, and I have to go through and, and replace those frames here when I get done. So I went up and I got a box of some drawn frames. I'm going to go spread them around, and then we're going to start moving queen cells. thought I'd show you real quick. It's been an hour and a half since I lit the smoker with my wood pellets. Now you gotta do, revive it, get a few good hard puffs. See, it's still going good. What I've done is I've gone ahead and put empty frames in the rest of these nuke boxes to fill up space so that things don't slide around. And I put in empty frames on purpose. There's not a lot of bees in these. I mean, there's nurse bees, but it's gonna be a while before anybody gets mated and, and laid and hatched. If I was to give all these all drawn comb I could feed the feed them and get them to try to fill it all up but most likely what's going to happen is it's not all that comes and get filled it's going to leave places for hive beetles to hide and infest and not be able to uh, be ran off by the bees so in this way the bees have you know the brood some honey some of them don't have honey they will get a feeder jar and I've given those a uh, comb of drawn uh, wax to fill up then these either have one frame of empty inside of it or these other ones have three to fill them up and that's just to keep you know keep everything settled but not give beetles anywhere to hide and then once everybody gets mated and comes back and I see how many don't make it I'll start shuffling drawing comb around to make up actual you know stronger nukes and I can steal some more brood out of the upper hives if they lay more more eggs and get rebuilt this one's put back together. She's good to go. I'm just going to let her keep producing like normal. And uh, what I've done is I've left the lids off all these intentionally to kind of help dissipate the, the queen pheromone that might be on the frames of the uh, brood that I brought out. And all the other frames of drawn uh, wax and empty were for my stacks out in the front of the house. There's no queen pheromone on them. They've been out in the open air airing out you know, for weeks basically all year so far and then I've come through and I've given everybody a little <laughs> little smoke to kind of bust up the smells and I'm gonna go ahead and start dropping in queen cells all right now I've taken our uh, queen cells out of our box we're holding them in I brushed the bees off get a nice soft horsehair brush you know, and then there's plastic bristles make sure you brush them off and do not shake them you can hurt the queens inside of their developing, so gently brush them over and over until you get everybody off that you need. Now that all the bees are removed, I can actually see my top bar did a lot better than my bottom bar. And I used one tool on one bar and a different tool on another. So I'll have to go back and look at my video and see which tool I used on that top bar to see what I had a better grafting success with. So now I'm going to go and uh, remove one of these and put them in each cell. Get over and see my screen. See, these are those little push in cups, so I'll kind of twist and pry them out. I've got my small little tool I use, it's like a hive tool to help with that. And I'll, I'll pull each cell out and I'll drop into nukes. You can see which ones are capped and which ones they just quit on for whatever reason. You 
very gentle. I'm going to put the camera down so I can do this without jerking and shaking anybody. Well, now I've been putting straps around all the lids, we are done. So what I ended up with was, let's see, three, four, made 13 nukes. Um, one of the nukes, when I put the queen in, I kind of bumped the side of it and I'm not sure if I damaged the cell or not, so I put two into it. So we actually used 14 queen cells to make 13 nukes. And I actually have three more left over that were extras that I really can't use. So I called a friend of mine who's going to come up here this evening and take the bar with those three back to his place and use them. And that's why I put this frame on top to remember where I put that that uh, grafting frame. I'm going to have to keep them you know, nice and warm. So I put, them, I put a queen cell in this for the hive. Then I also put that bar in it. I'm not worried about them hatching today. So, you know, that's, it's not going to be a big deal as long as they get out of here today or tomorrow. And uh, I'll scrounge up some feeder jars. I'll stick some empty ones on there for now just to fill the holes up and I'll make some food tonight or in the morning and start giving it to everybody. But what it looks like, let's find this one here. So you can see the top of that cup there, that's the queen. And I put her in between the food frame and the brood frame, that way there's plenty of bees on it. And put the extra to the outside to take up the space. It's going to be a few more days before these queens hatch. Give them a couple weeks to get mated really well, then start laying. So I'm probably not going to look back inside of these to see if there's really anything going on until towards the end of July. Which, this is about to be the last week of June. So, you know, maybe third week of July, I may take a peek just because I'm curious to see who's doing what. But I'm not going to really call any of them failures until the last week of July until the first week of August. That way I know for sure they've had plenty of time to mate and come in and lay. Because sometimes I have queens that'll take, you know, three or four weeks before they lay. So you just never know. So I'm going to get straps on everybody, get all my stuff cleaned up, wrapped up, and uh, we're going to call this a day. Now everything is all done. All the straps are on, all the feeder jars are on. You can see I put a little bit of a rebuilder supplement at the entrances and all the hives. I do that every now and then when I'm making nukes. I rob one really hard just to make sure they have enough resources. You can see how fast they take that in. I, mean, I literally just poured that on the ports and they've already got a path cleared. So there's our, our mother hive. We've taken everything from over all this time. Got a couple of nukes there. You can see I've alternated the colors. I've mixed them up. And the direction. Every ever hive's pointed the complete opposite direction to help the new queens coming back kind of find the right hive. If you put them all in tight together in the same direction, even if they're different colors, you're running the risk of the queen accidentally flying into the wrong one. So that's why I have some colors completely separated. I've got my bigger five frames pointing one direction and alternating them with colored three frames, all different colors. Same over here. Let's see. Even on my five frame nukes, I have little plastic discs. Different colors I have screwed to the front to also help distinguish them from, from everything else. And like I've said before, the big feeder jars and the big hives are basically just uh, the space entrance reducers. They just take up space. I don't have anything in these right now. I do have a little some food in the five frame nukes that I made because I didn't put honey frames in those. I put drawn comb and gave them some feed that way they could take it down and have somewhere to store it. These little three frames have fully capped frames of honey inside of them. And the bigger hives have left resources in them just like they were before. So uh, that's everything we've, we've gotten accomplished out here. Just trying to show you that <clears throat> now, even if you only have one hive, if you, if you handle it right, you can make plenty of other resources and nukes and brood frames and there's a lot of different things you can do even with just one hive. It is a lot simpler if you have multiples, but let's say if you've gone through winter time and you've lost all but just one, 
you know, you can rebuild. I haven't had such a good time getting queens to come back this year. They've been hatching and going out to mate and just not making them back. So that's why I'm doing this many at one time. Um, if, you know, 50% of them come back, I'll be happy. So we're not going to have this many hives in a month from now. It's going to get consolidated down. We're just going to have to see basically how lucky we get with queens mating and making it back home before they get picked off by predators or windshields. So there's not really much of anything else to show you. So I'm going to go ahead and head out and um, not sure what the next video is going to be about. But, you know, if you if you found this video to be somewhat helpful or useful or, you know, just interesting to watch, um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube page. That way you can get updates on new uh, videos coming out. And I'll also put uh, posts about new videos being up at my Facebook page. So that's going to be all for today. It's uh, time to go cut some grass. And uh, see you later.